Hello fellow history nuts. Welcome to another episode of History in a Flash. Please do forgive my two week absence. Things have been a bit crazy. I shan't bore you with the details, don't worry. Today I'm going to be talking about Georgina Cavendish, the Duchess of Devonshire, because I think it's time we get some girl power up in here. And she was pretty fabulous. Her life was really tragic in many ways, as I suppose were many women's lives in those days, but I think it deserves to be celebrated and I'm really excited to talk about her, so let's get on with it, shall we? Jordana was born with the maiden name Spencer on the 7th of June 1757 in Althorpe, Northamptonshire. She was the daughter of John Spencer, 1st Earl Spencer, and Margaret Georgina Spencer, Countess Spencer. So she came from a very affluent family from her birth, and she was her mother's favourite by her mother's own admission. In spite of the fact that she had two younger siblings named Henrietta and George, her family was already really rich, but in 1761, her father got an upgrade and he became a Viscount, which in turn meant that Georgina got a little upgrade too, and she became known as Honourable Georgina Spencer, which I think is pretty freaking awesome. How many four-year-olds can say that they can have a title like that? Just saying. That's... Georgina was a Georgian societal beauty. She had gorgeous auburn hair, she was beautiful, and she had the kind spirit, so she attracted the attention of men everywhere. Unfortunately, she didn't stay on the market long and was soon betrothed to William Cavendish. I suppose it doesn't take a genius to figure out that William was the Duke of Devonshire. He, uh, She did end up the Duchess. You gotta take that leap. She was woken on her 17th birthday, two days before the actual ceremony was due to take place, and told that she was getting married. This was her parents' idea, because they were worried that a big ceremony was going to get mobbed due to the prestige of this ceremony. The Duke was one of the most powerful peers in all of England. So, yeah, she got married on a day she didn't even know. But um, she was excited about the marriage anyway, which is really unfortunate because it wasn't going to be a happy one. William was a soft-spoken man. He didn't say much. He seemed very shy and reserved, a lot like her father. So Georgina expected him to be like her father, but he was nothing like her father. He kept mistresses, he drank, he partied, and he kept her out of the loop. He didn't speak to her. She felt abandoned and she was distressed, but she kept it to herself a lot, instead lying and telling her mother that she was very happy in her marriage when in fact she was incredibly miserable. A few days after they got married, they were supposed to have an audience with the Queen. He showed up four hours late. I mean, come on. He's the Duke. He's supposed to be setting the example. She's a 17-year-old girl. She's new in this world. That's seriously dodgy. And he spent a great deal of time in these sex gardens, drinking and partying. So... This shy, reserved man was, in fact, not very shy and reserved. A lot of people have probably seen the movie The Duchess, and personally, it's one of my favourite movies. However, it does have a lot of inaccuracies. Unfortunately, they did take a lot of liberties, which does happen frequently with historical movies. They had to cut a large portion of years out. For instance, in the movie, 
Georgina gets pregnant and has her first baby very quickly into the marriage, when in actual fact, Georgina and William got married in 1774, but she actually only had her first baby in 1783. So that's a really long time. In between then, she got pregnant multiple times, but she had many miscarriages. You can just imagine what that did to her. Also, in the movie, she's already pregnant when she meets Charlotte, who was William's illegitimate child that he had with another woman named Charlotte Spencer, who, by the way, no relation to Georgina whatsoever. But in real life, when Georgina adopted Charlotte as her daughter, she wasn't pregnant. So there's also that. In 1782, Georgina met the woman who would be part of her downfall. A woman who she thought she could trust, who ended up betraying her more than possibly anybody else. Lady Elizabeth Foster. Pretty soon, Elizabeth was living with, with them and she started an affair with the Duke. So she betrayed Georgina in the worst way possible. She broke her trust after she thought she was her very best friend. But now let's get some more ugh, away from that ugh, depressing stuff. Georgina was a socialite. She was someone that people looked up to for fashion. And she was the Whigs Party's, like, uh, biggest supporter, the Whig Party being a political party. Which is possibly where she met Charles Grey, who would one day become the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. So Georgina had this affair with Charles Grey, which made her really happy. She was deeply in love with him, but William forbade it. In fact, when she got pregnant with Charles's child, he sent her abroad, forced her to have the baby there, and then to give it to Gray's family. And she was never to see the child again. She did see her the child in secret sometimes, a child named Eliza. At first, she refused to give Gray up. So William gave her an ultimatum. He said he would divorce her. He would make sure that Grey never became Prime Minister. He would make sure every bank account in the whole of England was closed to them. They would be sullied, they would be shunned. And he would make sure she never saw her children again. Georgina's life pretty much fell apart after that point. Bess continued to live with them, so it was like a three-way marriage, what they called a menage a trois, and she was just expected to be okay with it. Charles Grey got engaged without telling her, which made her really sad, as you can imagine it would, even though they did become friends again somehow in later years. In 1796, she succumbed to an illness in one eye and lost her sight. It also resulted in scarring of her face and meant she lost that aesthetic beauty. But in her eyes, it was a blessing because she no longer had to live up to that over-the-top expectation. And her health continued declining into her 40s. She started to complain of jaundice to her mother and asking for money. She had a serious gambling addiction. People didn't really take it too seriously at first. Her complaints of illness until they started noticing that she really was ill. She died on the 30th of March. 1806 at 3.30 
in the afternoon at the age of 48 and she was so young and she led such a difficult life filled with addiction filled with such pain I like to think that in amongst all that she found some happiness she was anyway that's the story of Georgina Cavendish Anyway, I know this one was a little bit longer, but I felt like she deserved a little bit longer one. I've been wanting to do something about her for a long time, for some reason. I just feel she needs to be spoken about. It's probably... I just think she's misunderstood. And I'm sorry if there are inaccuracies. Again, I'm not a historian. And I haven't studied her life in intricate detail, but I hope you've enjoyed this anyway. I'm sorry if I got a little bit emotional, <laughs> but uh, that is happy history not out and off like a dirty shirt. Did you know that she was actually related to Diana Spencer? Yeah, Princess Diana is a direct descendant of Georgina Spencer. Isn't it ironic how they both had such tragic lives? I also can't go without mentioning that when Eliza found out only after Georgina died that Georgina was actually her mother and Eliza had a baby, she named her baby Georgina in honour of Georgina. Isn't that beautiful?